The next one is the percutaneous liver biopsy. This one's very important for you to learn and know. Always assess the patient for bleeding risk because this one we are going to actually put a needle in the liver to biopsy it. The liver is a very vascular organ and it's a high bleeding risk. So um, our liver is responsible for making the uh, blood clotting proteins. So obviously we have a lot of um, blood in our liver, high risk for bleeding. So always assess that. Um, so the percutaneous liver biopsy is when we are going to look for cancer cells or things that are changing. Maybe we want to diagnose liver cirrhosis or hepatitis C or just liver cancer. So we're going to take a needle and we're going to puncture through the skin, through the skin. This is a right upper quadrant, right, uh, it'd be right, um, right upper side of the body. The physician will take the large bore needle and put it into the body there. So before the procedure, we need to make sure our client is NPO. Because anytime we're going to have a procedure, we don't want them to vomit or to aspirate on stomach content. So NPO um, after midnight. Make sure we have labs on chart for coagulation studies, your PT, PTT, platelet count, hemoglobin. Give antibiotics. We're going to poke the skin, break the skin integrity. We need antibiotics. The client may receive a sedative, a couple of milligrams of Versed, most likely. The client may also receive a um, prophylactic vitamin K shot. Vitamin K is given IM. It is an injection and it is to help uh, blood clotting. So vitamin K is a vitamin that's for blood clotting. We're going to give that to help prevent any sort of bleeding that might happen. So then we're going to take, the physician will take the ultrasound and guide the needle to puncture the liver. And the patient is in the position uh, supine with the right arm behind the head. Okay, so we're going to position the patient for the procedure. Go ahead and do it. Get ready. Okay, position you, the patient, right arm behind the head. Okay, next, after the procedure is over, we are going to put a pressure dressing, put some pressure dressing on the biopsy site. We don't want to bleed, remember? So pressure dressing. We will turn the patient on the right side with a rolled towel under the costal margin. Okay, so right arm, pressure dressing, right side towel, and we're going to turn and lay here. We're going to lay here like this. How long do I got to lay here like this? Two hours. That's right. That's it. Two hours. Oh, I should have gone to the bathroom. Yeah. Make sure your patient empties their bladder before you do this procedure because they're going to stay here for two hours. Can I get up after two hours? No, you can't get up after two hours. You have to stay in bed for eight to 12 hours, except to go to the bathroom. And by the way, no caulking or straining. We don't want to dislodge any clots from that pressure dressing. And we're gonna monitor your vital signs because if your heart rate gets higher and your blood pressure gets lower, that's gonna give me some signs and symptoms that you may be bleeding. Okay, and we're gonna monitor the dressing site for bleeding. If I see a little bit of bleeding, then I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to mark around where the bleeding is. So when I come back to assess it, I can check to see if their bleeding has continued. Okay, so we will tell the patient, we're going to be here for a procedure, laying flat on your back, with your right arm over your head. Physician will tell you when to hold your breath while they're puncturing the liver. As soon as it's done, I'm going to apply a pressure dressing, and I'm going to get a rolled towel, put it on the site, lean on that towel, right side, for two hours, no moving, no coughing, no straining. You're going to stay your butt in bed and you're gonna sit here, okay? Then eight to 12 hours bed rest because it's very finicky and we don't want it to bleed. We're gonna monitor the dressing for bleeding, monitor vital signs, monitor for complications, okay?
So, bleeding risk, precautionary things for bleeding, vitamin K, labs, coags, make sure they're NPO, they may receive a sedative, so afterwards we'll still monitor them for sedation precautions. Make sure they go to the bathroom before this procedure, that just makes sense. So after that liver biopsy, you know this now, right side, two hours on a rolled towel, eight to 12 hours bed rest, monitor their vital signs. Well, what about their vital signs? Well, if their uh, blood pressure becomes lower, trending lower, and their heart rate starts to trend high, that's a sign of bleeding, hypovolemia. So that would indicate some bleeding there. Monitor for bleeding, swelling, or hematomas on the dressing, um, breast sounds, um, we want to monitor breath sounds because if you put a if you're gonna put a needle right here, then that is right next to what other vital organ? Yeah, the lungs. So accidental puncture, maybe if the patient can't hold their breath and be still long enough for the puncture, they may nick the lung without knowing it. So if they we listen to breath sounds, we might can hear some wheezing, maybe some crackles or something abnormal there that would indicate um, that there is some pneumothorax happening there. No coughing and no straining. So after a liver biopsy is done on a client with cirrhosis, which nursing action is most appropriate? Are you going to ambulate the client twice a shift? Elevate the client's legs on two pillows? Keeping the client in a high fellers position or position the client on the right side. Y'all better get this right. What y'all what y'all think? Y'all better get this right. I mean, they had a liver biopsy. They supposed to get up. What's the elevating the legs gonna do? Nothing. Uh are you gonna get them up to ambulate? Now's not the time to be worried about pneumonia. You know, okay, um, yeah, so hopefully you chose the right answer, and that's for positioning the client on the right side.